Hi, I'm Lindsay Bugby from The Postman's Knock, and today I have some tasty and free calligraphy drills for you. These calligraphy drills are meant to help you practice your strokes and become more comfortable with your pen control, all while making graphics that are stimulating and creative. It's just a fun way to get in practice or if you're at a more advanced level to warm up. So today we have these foodie calligraphy drills and first up is pancakes. What I would do, what I would recommend is getting out an ink that either you are comfortable with or an ink that you're not comfortable with and you want to work a little more with, become familiar with. And then of course you need your water and your pointed pen of choice. Today I'm going pretty standard with a straight pen holder and Nico G nib, but you should feel free to use a pen that has been giving you trouble that you want to get to know a little more because this is practice. So one thing that I want to impart is you should always feel free to rotate the paper. And with these pancake drills, that's exactly what you'll want to do. So first you look at the pancakes, you look at the arrows to see how to make them, and then you make them. So this is basically an upstroke, and then we go downstroke, and then you work your way from there. So we're working on our upstrokes and downstrokes, and actually I need to rotate this even further so I can, I can be exerting even balance pressure on both tines of my nib. And you really need to understand that rotation is not an issue. You shouldn't feel bad if you need to severely rotate your paper in order to accommodate those nice thick downstrokes and thin upstrokes. It's all about getting your pen to have that balanced, even pressure exertion. And then you make the plate. So then in spots four and five, you work on the drill on your own. So you're going to reference one, two, and three in order to make four and five. So this does a couple of things. First of all, it helps you to work on your stroke contrast without any help. You are completely freehand drawing these pancakes. But secondly, I think that it's important to eyeball and try to mimic what you're seeing in these first three squares because we do that when we're writing out characters in pointed pen calligraphy. It is a lot of eyeballing, especially when it comes to space. And so in square four, you'll want to start roughly where you started in square three. So you are using your best judgment to come up with that spacing and that's going to translate into better kerning when it comes to pointed pen calligraphy. You'll be able to make letters that are better spaced and then also just echoing similar letter forms. You know, if you have a lowercase a here in this word and then you have a lowercase a in the next word, you'll be better able to match the width and the formation. So, all right, I'm going to speed up the video as I make these pancakes in four and five because you just watched me do them in three. All right, as you can see, my pancakes aren't exactly identical to number three, but definitely close enough. Good stroke contrast practice. And now we can move on to escargot, which I've only had once when we were in France and it tasted a lot like pesto. So with the escargot, you can start anywhere. I would recommend for right-handed people starting in the left corner here. For left-handed people, I would start in the right corner just for purposes of keeping your hand out of the way. And just as you're writing, look over and follow the arrows over here to figure out exactly how to write uh, and which direction to write in. And again, I would write in the direction that most facilitates keeping your hand out of the way. So just think about where your hand needs to be 
And if it's going to end up going over some ink, then try to think about if a different shell would be a better place to start. And then I think it's probably best for me to finish up with these two here on the right. Again, if you're left-handed, I would start on the right and work your way to the left to avoid your hand getting in that ink. And just like in calligraphy where we're drawing letters, down strokes are thick, up strokes are thin. Okay, so there's my escargot drill. This one's going to be a little more tricky to make in four and five, so just do your best. That's what I'm going to do. Doesn't have to exactly match what we're seeing in one, two, and three. The most important part is just working on that stroke contrast, being relaxed, getting that nice quality pointed pen practice in. All right, so you can see my seashells, my escargot, vary just a bit from what I have in one, two, and three. All right, so now let's move on to mushroom. This is one of my favorite drills because it teases a drawing technique called cross hatching. All right, so I love cross hatching. Um, let's actually start with this as a horizontal stroke. It is the technique where you draw a whole bunch of little squares, little crosses, and you shade things that way. So if you've ever read Where the Wild Things Are, really popular children's book, um, Maurice Sendak uses the cross-hatching technique to shade his illustrations. It's super cool. I've got a fabulous tutorial over how to cross hatch. If you're curious, I'll link to it in the video description. And all you do to cross hatch, I have the arrows going this way and down. I'm actually going to go this way. That just feels a little more right today. You do what works for you. Just follow the contours of the mushroom in that these go like they follow that curve. Does that make sense? So you're not going to make all of these lines go to the same place. They shouldn't all end in the middle. And then go ahead and go down. That's a great scratchy nib sound. And there you've got your crosshatch mushroom. All right, so now let's try freestyle no guides. Okay, now croissant here is probably the easiest out of all the drills or the simplest of all the drills. So I would recommend rotating your paper for this one just however you need to. If your ink is still dry from the mushroom, keep that in mind. Mine is, so I might write a little weird at first to try to not smear that ink, but this is just a series of wobbly upstrokes and wobbly downstrokes to mimic all of those buttery, yummy layers that you see in a croissant. And then I think I can rotate that over there. As you go, you will probably change your rotation of the paper. And I just caught myself hunching. So try not to hunch as you're filling out these drills. This is just as much a body drill as it is a hand drill. So you're just practicing for when you actually make projects that will go out into the world. You want to make sure that as you're creating calligraphy, you're staying nice and tall and not putting a strain on those shoulders, hunching your back, because you want to be able to write for a while and have that position be sustainable. 
Okay, now let's try without any guides. I already know that my croissant is going to look a bit different, but that's okay. And again, the croissant doesn't look exactly like it does in the first three squares, but I got in some really good upstroke and downstroke practice, so that is a win in my book. And then we have avocado, which is a collection of two downstrokes. Whoops, I got a fiber stuck in there. We don't want that. Okay, so it's a collection of two downstrokes. We start at the top, go down. And the reason I designed this avocado this way is because avocados have that thick, dark outside. So we want to represent that with the downstroke here. And then the inside, the seed is just a circle. So thick downstroke, thin upstroke. And then we're going to do that cross hatching technique again. And this one's a little more complicated because we are following the contours of the seed. So you're just imagining a circle here. We'll make a couple here in the middle and then turn it and do some shading here on the sides. And then we do the, um, the up and down, the vertical part of the cross hatching. And isn't this amazing how much dimension it gives to the avocado seed. So yes, you're practicing pointed pen calligraphy here, but I'm also hoping to sort of give you this gateway into pen and ink drawing because this is a very powerful tool when it comes to pen and ink drawing. As you may or may not know, the um, Nico G nib was originally developed as a manga nib. So for manga illustrations, and then people figured out that it was pretty great for calligraphy and that is why we have the manga nib, this uh, Nico G being recommended for calligraphy beginners today because it is a great beginner nib, but it is a powerful, powerful drawing tool. So I do recommend you try that cross hatching technique if you can. All right, now I'll speed up the video. Okay, so this last drill is a pineapple and I realized as I was going along what I explained um, how to do it just a little bit wrong, a little bit confusing. So I'm actually going to make it over here in square four. And it's pretty simple. You just start with this thick downstroke, thin upstroke, make your oval, maybe try to make it a little wider than what I did. I'm working with kind of a narrow pineapple here in square four, but that's okay. There are narrow pineapples out there. And this is a fun motif because you can use it outside of this drill sheet. And I would say the same actually for the avocado. You could use these motifs in sketchbook journals, bullet journals. Um, you could use them on mail art, bookmarks, etc. And then once you get this general outline here, I would recommend making, let's see, how did I do this? Yeah. So make these diagonal rounded lines as thin downstrokes because we don't want to overpower this pineapple with thick downstrokes on the on the pattern here in the pineapple. And then for the opposite diagonals, you can make those thicker. Not super thick though, because again, you don't want to overpower the pineapple. All right, so let me make the last one here. Okay. I hope that you enjoy filling out these fun foodie calligraphy drills as much as I do. I feel like there is nothing more satisfying than looking at a page like this and seeing it 
all filled out and knowing that if you want to, you know how to use this avocado motif to really add some embellishment to something. You can use the pineapple to make a really cool piece of mail art, a really cool bookmark, whatever. It's just a fun way to tap into your creativity and improve your pointed pen skills in the process. If you enjoyed filling out these foodie calligraphy drills, I suspect that you will love the Not Your Average Calligraphy Drills Food Edition Worksheet on the TPK website. So that is a premium worksheet. It's several pages long, a few days worth of practice, and among other things, it has this fabulous flourish teapot drill that you could use on other projects like sketchbooks or mail art. So definitely, definitely check that out if you're interested. In buying worksheets like that one that are available for a nominal fee, you help me to keep this YouTube channel going, you help me to keep making videos, to keep churning out free calligraphy worksheets. So if you're interested and if you can, if you can, I would love for you to snag that. If not, no worries. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.